Hi everyone, welcome to Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. In this week's episode, we're gonna take a look at how to pass functions around as variables. We'll take a quick look at a real example of where this came up for me in a project I was working on, the mechanics behind how it works, and then some of the pros and cons of having this extra tool for us to write some really great Swift elegant code. Okay, let's begin. So where this problem came up for me this week in our project is I want to try a unit test for a line just like this in a view controller. I wanted to write a unit test that mocked out this dependency injected user manager. I wanted to have a mock which uh, overrode that functionality. And when I went to extend the user manager that would have normally had this functionality that I would have overwritten, I got this error that I hadn't seen before. Overriding declarations from extensions is not supported. And just for reasons, um, that's the way this user manager was designed. Some functionality was added via an extension and I couldn't override it here in my mock the way I wanted to. So I started scratching my head. I asked my buddy, Dan, who I always ask when I get into problems like this, hey Dan, any ideas on how I could overcome this? And he said, why don't you pass in the function itself? And I was like, you can do that? You can actually pass around functions? And he said, yeah. So before I show you how I solve that problem by passing around a function, let's look at the mechanics behind how passing functions and using those as variables works. Not many people appreciate this about Swift, but in Swift, you can pass around functions just like variables. I know I hadn't really thought of Swift that way, but here's an example of how that would work. Think of this as a variable. Here I've got a struct called math, and I'm simply defining a function that adds two numbers. What I didn't realize was that you can actually think of this func as a variable, just like a var or a let. You can define this as a variable, and you can then use it as a variable in other classes. For example, here I've created something called calculator, which has a variable called math function, and look at its type. The type here, two ints returning an int, that's actually a type in Swift. That's the type of the function that I'm gonna to assign to this value. And in this case, I'm just assigning it the value of math add two ints. But what you can do with this is you can reassign that variable later. I can instantiate a calculator and assign a different function to that, one that subtracts two ints, and you can basically use and treat functions just like any other variable in Swift. And that's really handy and powerful. You can also add an argument and pass functions as arguments uh, to other structs. Here I've got a struct called command with a function called execute, and it takes a type of function that takes two ints and returns an int. Here I've declared, I've called the name variable here to int equation, and I can simply take in that value that's passed, pass the numbers I want, and then print out the answer. And if I wanted to execute it, I can then define it like this and pass in whatever function I want. If your expression gets really complicated, as it sometimes does in Swift, this is a really handy case for a type alias. I can create a type alias for this expression, two ints returning an int, and then I can use that as my type when defining a function in that calculator. This makes it a little bit more readable. But this is a really interesting mechanic I had never really used before. Now let's take a look and see how we could use that in a unit test. Okay, so here's the same view controller I had before, but this time I've added that function as a variable. Take a look at this. By creating a var called delete func, this is the function I want to override and pass in from unit test. I can declare that as a variable, declare its type here, and make it optional. And you'll see why in a second. So what I've really done here is to find a variable that I'm gonna override from my unit test, but I still wanna use the default value from the user manager as it's passed in. And that's what we do with this line here. When the actual delete button is pressed, look what happens here. I can either use the delete func that has been set via my variable, or I can use the one that's already associated with the real user manager, the one I really want to do the work. Then, once I have my func, I can simply execute it. From a unit testing point of view, this is what it looks like. This, of course, is a fake unit test, but the mechanics are pretty much the same. Here I can define my mock delete function. This is the one I want to override in my unit test. Set up my view controller by dependency injecting or passing in a real user manager. But look at this. I can override the functionality of how that delete's gonna work by setting that as the variable here. This is the fake function that's gonna execute as a result of me passing it in here. And now when I run this and I go view controller delete button pressed, I can take a look at the output and sure enough, my fake delete was called. 
pretty cool. So what are some of the pros and cons of passing functions like this? Well, for pros, I think it's a more functional style of programming, which is nice because this is what Swift supports. Passing out as functions, treating them as variables, can solve some tricky testing situations we sometimes come up with in unit tests. And it's just another handy tool that we have for passing functionality around without having to couple it to a struct or a class. So it really emphasizes that more functional style of programming. Cons? Well, I wouldn't say this is exactly very mainstream. Passing around functions isn't something we typically do in traditional OO languages, but that's okay because Swift is moving beyond that. It's more non-conventional, it is slightly more complex, it's definitely not the norm, but I really like having this tool in our tool belt as it gives us the ability to do some things that we wouldn't normally be able to do. And I think that's pretty cool with any new language, and I really like that Swift allows us to do this. So I'm gonna give this a big thumbs up. Anyways, I hope you found that useful. It's kind of a neat trick, something I haven't really thought about or used a ton in the past, but it's one I'm keen in exploring, and I hope you will too. Go ahead, try writing some functions, pass them around as variables, and see how that feels. It's another nice tool to have in your toolkit for writing great Swift code. All right, thanks for coming, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.